Now, that's better. Oh my goodness, quick, quick, quick. Shares, we've got two minutes to share. Welcome, we're doing cable car math. We did it, we did the instructions last night, but I'm going to run over a couple of things again quickly this morning so that you can actually do the activities. So, waiting for it to come up so I can do the sharing. Got two minutes left to go. I had a technical difficulty. I forgot to plug in the camera, the correct camera. So, operator error. And it's there it is, lovely, okay. So we share it on the Bubbly Maths page, which, okay, share on the Bubbly Maths page in a page, one minute to go, one minute before we start. Can I get all the sharing done in time? Oh my goodness, no pressure. Choose the right page and then say something about it. And then do a watch party and go. No, no, because I've got to actually select the place that the watch party goes. Share on my timeline and say something about it. And that is start. Right, hopefully you've got it. And it's not, oh my goodness, it's not nine o'clock yet. Way, fantastic. All right. Great. Okay, we're, and it's nine o'clock, good to go. Welcome, good morning. We are doing um, cable car maths and it's inspired by Table Mountain. And if you've never seen a picture of Table Mountain, it's a mountain in South Africa in Cape Town that is flat on top. And then it has a cloud on the top of it and they call that the table cloth. And it, it Come, like, it's as though it comes from nowhere and then on one side it kind of it's as though it flows down and um, there's a few mountains in the region that do that you can actually see the clouds forming on one of them on the other side because there's oceans on both sides of Table Mountain and on the other side which is part of the Indian Ocean there's this mountain where you literally can see the clouds forming and then floating along so it's it's quite an interesting geographical phenomenon phenomenon and it's very in, I, I find it fascinating i can just sit and watch it so table mountain flat as a table well not quite if you go to the top of it it's not that flat but it's it's flat enough that isn't it the hills you can choose to climb or not so today we're doing i'm going to start off with um so if, if you if you different ages together then if you're an older learner, you can help the younger learners if you like. And activities that we've got is, is well, I'll we'll start with, we're talking about the cable car, but for the young learners, what we're going to do is we're going to measure. We're going to measure everything around the house and that the whole family can do, all the, everyone in the, in the home can do that. And one of the most powerful things for measuring that I know of is what a meter stick, now the meter stick is, if I come around here, bring my technology around here, see if we can, I've got to be able to see what I'm doing on the computer, you see the newspaper there, so you can get some paper of any description, that would be really helpful. Hi Miss McGough, hi Christine. Um, and now I'm going to see what I'm doing there to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. And then maybe bring this further back, maybe over here. Oh, that looks, that doesn't look too bad there. Okay, right. It's not going to be the whole width, but it's going to be a lot better. Right, so making a meter stick. Nice and quickly making a meter stick with, I've got six sheets of newspaper. The reason newspaper is it's recyclable and it's, um, let me see if I can just a little bit so you can see me as well. There we go. Six sheets of newspaper and we're gonna split them into two at the end, two in the middle and two at this end. Now, I've, all I've got with me is a 30 centimeter ruler 
So what I've done is I have cut a piece of string that's one meter long. So I'm using that piece of string that I know is a meter to measure to make sure I've got the right length here. So I've got to make sure it's about the right length, more or less. I will adjust it again in a minute once I've done the folding. So now we're going to fold it in thirds. One. Two. And actually, I've moved it. And there we go. And three. Now I've got a long folded piece of newspapers three sections. So each one had two sections of paper in it. And the length is, well, actually, yeah, I didn't move it that much. So now what I'm going to do is get, I've just moved everything. There we go. Get some string. So what we're going to do is take about 30 centimeters. Can you see that? About 30 centimeters on either end and then take after the 30 centimeters, now have the full length of a meter and then another 30 centimeters. And then we can cut that, says she with confidence. With utter confidence, I thought I had everything ready. There we go, cut that. And we can now place this inside. We're not just going to place it inside though, we're going to tape it into place. So we want 30 centimeters sticking out this end and 30 centimeters sticking out the other end. If you lift up the ends and just balance them, you can't see everything I'm doing, but I'm holding, let me see if we can get one end of that. Oh, I don't want to change the one end, 30 centimeters. Oh, there you go, I want 30 centimeters at each end. So we've got some nice length to tie these meter sticks together. One last time, let's make sure we have the right length. Yeah, I've, I've adjust, I've changed the length now. There we go, now we have, that's a meter. I'm gonna get some tape and I use the, um, the painter's tape because as you can draw on it. And this way you can actually decorate your meter stick and because you can't draw on sticky tape. So I'm now sticking that down I've got one bit stuck. The other thing I want to do, of course, is secure the paper itself from moving. So I'm gonna do it right over the edges where they join so that papers can't move again. And there we go on this side. And now that is secure, fold that over. And then I'm also going to stick down here so that that doesn't move on the other side because nothing's actually securing that at this point because they are double thickness paper. So bring that towards me. Now I've got the rough bit of paper going towards me. So I'm now going to roll it up. This is much better done with more than one person. You see, I can do a tight roll here. But I can't do a tight roll across the whole stick, what happens is one end either goes skew if or doesn't get rolled as tightly. So you just have to keep going back and forth if you're on your own. But ideally, this is a group activity, even for two adults, never mind two young learners. Okay, so it's not gonna be as tight as it could be because it's only me and it keeps coming loose. That's so not too bad. And then take that you can do a much better job of it if you take your time about it, but this at least should show you what you can do. If you can improvise something now to, to find a meter, what we're going to do is we're going to do some measuring. Right, turn the camera around. What can we measure? Well, we can measure. We can measure ourselves we can compare heights we can think okay am i more than a meter or less than a meter am i 
um, how much more than a meter am I? If you've got two sticks, it's actually really easy to measure most humans because most humans are two meters or le less than two meters. You can measure the whole room. So I'm going to estimate it first. And then we're going to do, um, in a minute, we're going to do uh, work out how to do a plan of this room. And, but you can just go around the room, you can measure, estimate, decide how many meters you think it is wide and how many meters you think it is long. But look, we've got a sort of kinky thing over there. We've got a corner that isn't quite meet the plan. But depending what age you are, we don't have to worry about that. Well, but that'll be something we look at to make the plan of the room. So that's your meter stick. And, and that's the activity for the young learners. So decide on everyone's height, compare heights, who's taller, who's shorter, um, how much taller, how much shorter, and, um, and then just measure lots of things. Decide how many meters you think it might be and just measure the widths of rooms, the size of a table, the size of doors, the width of doors, indoors, outdoors, how long is a car, lots of, um, how long are the everyday um, items that you, how tall is, is how big is, is your fridge? How big, just everything, just to get a real sense of the size of the world around you. And then make drawings. So now that you know something about the size of it, make drawings, make drawings of the household items, make drawings of the house, make drawings of each other, of the family. So that's um, early years now. Up primary, if you're between about seven and 11, use those, the meter sticks to actually measure. So I'm going to unclip my microphone and I'll just talk nice and loud, but you can see. So we want to, what we're going to do is make scale drawings. So those drawings want to reflect actually what you've got. So we can make scale drawings of people so that you can actually put their measurements in. So if I'm, I'm 163, I think it is. And so you can measure me and, and draw me at 160. So you can maybe make it 16.3 centimeters for me and put everyone's height and compare. Now the scale is super important. If you, um, it isn't like, okay, you're a bit, for when you're younger, the important thing is to notice whether you're taller or shorter and how much taller or shorter. But when you're drawing scale drawings, you really want to use your centimeters. And in fact, if you can even estimate your, that use the millimeters in between, that's even better. So 163 is 16, but then I've got to use three millimeters. Can you see that? You've got to go to the millimeters and that's super important. So you're dividing one meter 63, 163 centimeters and you're splitting it down, um, you're dividing by 10, so it's 16.3 centimeters. So I am 10 times that height. My total height is 10 times that, so make it that way up. I'm 10 times that height. So 10 of those up to where my finger is, that's how tall I am. And, and the scale is really important. That is how tall I am if you know exactly what the scale is. So the scale of that picture, if you did me, if you drew me at 16.3, would, um, would be a scale drawing of one to 10. So the ratio would be one to 10 scale. Right, so we could do that. We could do a one to 10, or we could do a smaller ratio than that so that we can fit a whole room on a piece of paper. Let's see, I'm gonna measure this one. So let's. Now I'm going to make the measurements approximate because it's quite we're in quite a hurry. So I've taken the microphone off, so I'll talk nice and loud. You just have to watch, and I'll use my fingers as well to indicate. So back here we've got. Take this all. Take this as well. Um, well, we take them both. And we've got that there. Then you measure this. You measure this bit here. And we've got, this is 90 degrees. Now measure that, that's about a meter, close enough. One to there. 
two, and then there, it's about 30 meters. So that was, I'm gonna write it down. That was some, um, I've got, it was one point, 130 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 230 centimeters. Now this wall here, now I'm actually going to ignore this, I'm going to go all the way down this wall here from the end. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, that ends there, that's nice, three, four, and close enough, five meters. And then you can actually draw, measure the windows. You can draw the windows on there as well. Let me just measure those quickly. One, two, I've got nice big windows here. 2.5, 250. So the windows are 250 and the wall was 400. No, it was 500, it was five meters. So now I'm going to, now that I've written down my measurements, we want the shape and it's going to be a scale drawing and we're going to have right angles. So my scale, I'm going to make it. So my biggest one is 500. So my scale to make life easier for this, you would actually want to make it maybe a smaller scale, but I'm going to use a slightly larger piece of paper so I can just use one to 10 scale. So the scale is one to 10. And I'm going to start with the long wall, which is 50. And, you, and I'm going to make sure it's parallel to the edge of the paper. So that's, that's gonna, I'm just gonna take that to, so, oh, it's not 50 long. Well, that's not going to work. We'll have to go um, one to five then. One to, not one to five, one to 20. We change the scale to one to 20. So it's one to 20 for every meter. And it'll be five centimeters. So five times, Will that fit on there now? Yes, it will. So let's do it on here because that will actually be better. So we're gonna make sure this is a right angle. I'm gonna do it fairly roughly. I'm gonna use the edge of the ruler there to make sure that's a right angle, make sure it follows along and I'll make that 25. 25 long. And then the back wall was, so we're dividing by Um, if had five meters, oh, my brain just went. So we've had five meters. Oh dear. Five meters, can you work it out? So what are my measurements? My measurements are 100, now I'm gonna convert them. We want a one to 20 scale. So 500 centimeters becomes is to scale it's 25 centimeters and and they've all got to be the same if they're not the same oh let me put the microphone back on if they're not the same then they're not um it won't work so 500 um And so we, all we have to do is divide by 20, but my brain has decided it doesn't want to divide by 20 right now. So it's 12.5 centimeters. Doing this live is quite, um, is very, very different to, if you've just got a moment to think about things. So I'm working out the scale. So I'm just dividing by 20, each one of those by 20. So that'll be five centimeters. And then that one, I'm not going to divide by 20. I'm going to use my calculator that's 6.5. You can, you don't have to use your calculator. I am literally doing this live. So I don't have a moment to stop. And it's also quite stressful. So um, I'm just going to allow myself to use a calculator. So those are my measurements. So I've worked out the scale, we know the shapes. 
So that's my long wall. That's the long wall along there. We've got the window along here, which we'll mark off in a moment. Um, and we're going to write scale one to 20 up here now because that won't fit. Now we've got to make sure that it is perpendicular. So that's the end of the line. Now, if you have a set square, that would be better. Set square is much better than this. But I'm going to take that line and we want uh, this one, we want 250. No, the window is 250. The wall is 230. 130. No, the wall is that plus that. So it's 360. So 360 is, so it's 6.5 plus 11.5. We know what the, the length of this end is. This is the window end. So it's that plus that. So it's 6.5 plus 11.5, which is 18. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do, whoops, you can't see what I wrote. There we go. 6.5 times plus 11.5, 18. And you couldn't see what I was drawing. Oh dear, oh dear. There we go. So I have so far drawn. Oh, I knew that already from here. Okay, right. No, I didn't. No, I didn't know that already from there. What do I know from here? Right, I started drawing that. Never mind. I'm going to get rid of that because it's confusing me. Okay, so this wants to be 230, no, 18 centimeters. Total of three, 360 centimeters in real life, 18 centimeters on my scale drawing. And then that's the window. And the window, I'm just going to eyeball it. It was about more or less in the middle and more or less in the middle. And it's 230, 11.5 centimeters, 11.5 centimeters, more or less in the middle is about there. So that, now when you draw it on a, on a, you don't actually draw the window. What you do is you draw this, something like this. You could do the same thing for the door. And then that's the window. So it shows you where the window is, but it doesn't, um, it, it isn't a, a actual break. There's no, I'll show you how the door works as well. And let's see now this wall here we've got. Ah, well, I have to do subtraction here because I didn't actually measure that wall. So what we've got is we've got the 500 centimeters and then what is missing is the one meter from, the, from the, where the door is. So it's 400 centimeters and 400 centimeters will be 20 centimeters in by scale, one to 20 scale. So 20 centimeters along there and then we move here so you can see it. Now where the door is, we've got 6.5 centimeters going, 6.5 really, okay. 6.5 centimeters coming out. Didn't realize it stuck that far out into the room. I suppose it does. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Now I've got to make sure that that is parallel. Make sure that that is parallel to here. Now you need to use better, you can use better measuring instruments, but this will do 6.5 centimeters into the room. It goes a lot further into the room than I realized. And then the remainder should be one meter, it should be five centimeters and it's not, which means that my angles are not all right angles. All my angles here are not all right angles because I have an error here. This should be five centimeters and it's not. And so you might want to do a better job, but upper primary, you know what? That will be more than good if you do that. Now there's a door there and the way the door opens is it opens this way. So you draw the door like that and if you get the length the length of the door right so that is now that doing that drawing is probably a collaboration between upper primary and lower secondary if you together can 
do the measuring and get the angles right. Use a set square. Use, in fact, better than that, use, um, I did have it out here somewhere. I'll get my things ready. Oh, here it is. So you can actually measure the angles and see just where I went wrong there. Well, that looks like 90 degrees. Somewhere or other, I missed my 90 degrees. There's not, somewhere it's not right. That looks like 90 degrees. Oh, that one there. You can see it. Bring it down. That one there, just such a little error that's caused the whole drawing, the whole plan to be out. So you might, so for upper primary, you're not expected to use one of these lovely angle measuring devices. Um, but that's where I've gone wrong. That's 95 degrees there. It's not a right angle. I use my, I just did an eyeball there and I should have actually measured it. That is not a right angle. That is 95 degrees. And that's that going wrong there. It's caused that length, basically all of that to be wrong. So this length is wrong. So that just goes to show the importance of getting everything right so that your scale drawings are correct. So that's, now you can do that. Um, you can do that with, so this is, that, that activity is basically a combination. You can measure everybody in the home, put them all in order of height, do drawings, do scale drawings of things in the home. Uh, it's, and this is really useful life skill. If ever you want to, to design something, even if you want to add, just build a shed, or you want to make a box or a table or even a toy box, anything that you want to make, getting the angles right and getting the dimensions right and cutting the wood right or cutting whatever it is you're cutting, cutting everything right, measuring it and then measure, measuring what you need and then measuring the actual wood and cutting it right is all really important and getting the angles right. The angles are so important. And then, right, so that's, and then you can do that with other older, older learners in the house. And then what we've got, for going up the next level is we've got a cable car. We've got a cable car going up Table Mountain. I actually did that just over a year ago. It's the first time I'd been up Table Mountain and oh boy, was it scary. <laughs> it literally, the very last bit, you're going straight up. It feels like you're going straight up the face of a cliff. And I found it super scary, but it was also super beautiful. You can see the Atlantic Ocean from that side and and the mountain it's really gorgeous so what we're going to do is we want to if you don't know about table mountain do google it and find out if you've never seen it it is quite extraordinary but it's um we want to know how high so we've got the cable car uh, terminal at the bottom we've got cable car terminal at the top what we are told here just is that the Base is at 302 meters above sea level. We want to know how high, basically how high Table Mountain is. If I remember correctly, this bit was actually slightly lower than other parts of Table Mountain, but not much, not so you'd notice. And um, so that's what we're going to work out. Now, if you're in lower secondary and even upper primary, so that is if you're between the ages of say eight and 14, you can just draw, you, you can just draw that. So draw it, draw it accurately. So I'm going to do that here again. Remember how important the angle was and remember how important the 90 degree was. I tell you what, one little cheap thing you can do is use the angle of the paper itself you've got the angle of the paper and then if you're going to draw that scale model of it because I don't think this is to scale so we've got the 90 degrees there we don't know the height and actually we can't use that because we need to get the angle is going to determine Hold on, yes. Okay, yes, we, maybe we can. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to, I'm going to draw it separately because I might just go wrong if I do it the other way. 
So I'm going to draw, we don't know how long this is, we're just going to draw a line. Draw a line. And now we're going to get an angle of 40 degrees. So that goes right in the center there. And right, we're now going to get an angle of 40 degrees there. And that is super important. Getting that angle right makes all the difference as we just saw in the scale drawing of my living room. I'm going to take that up to there. Now we want um, uh, 1.2 kilometers. That's a pretty long. So that's what I did. I went 1.2 kilometers up to the top there. Um, so that's quite a, that's nearly a mile if anybody thinks in miles. Um, that takes about 15 minutes to walk, more than, it takes about 20 minutes to walk. So walking about 20 minutes, it would take you walking in a straight line through the air to, to do that journey. So what are we going to do? 1.2 kilometers, that's 1.2 kilometers is 1,200 meters. If we scale that down, should we say one to a hundred? We do one to a hundred, then we have, um, wait a minute, let me get this right. 1.2 kilometers, we want it, it's not one, it's one to a thousand, I think, because we want 12 centimeters. I'm gonna just check that out. So 1,200 meters is 12, thousand centimeters so one to a thousand is 12 centimeters so i'm gonna make it 12 centimeters which is right there now we've got another angle that is super super utterly critically important as we discovered before this angle here now how to do this angle how to do this angle that's a good question i don't actually remember how to do this because to get that angle right, I've got to be on there, but that, um, that's interesting. I've forgotten how to do this. So you're gonna have to work it out. And when we do the video, this is great because when I do the video for the, um, for the YouTube channel for Mass Toys, then I'll get it all much better. I'm just gonna do it like that. I've got, that's, no, that's not right, not there. That and that have to be lined up. That has to be lined up to 90 degrees. Now, is that now lined up 180? No, it's not in the right place. So bring that back. That's lined up. That's lined up. Is that lined up with then? Just a skosh more and pull that out without moving the ruler. It's not, it's not 100%, but that is more or less a right angle and the height of Table Mountain is 7.6 centimeters. So that's 7.6 centimeters. That's 12 centimeters. And that is equivalent to 12,000 centimeters. So that is equivalent to 7,600 centimeters, which is 760 meters. So that I've worked, oh, I've just done it for you. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't supposed to do it for you. <laughs> I've got, see, I got so engrossed in the activity that I've gone and done it. So I suppose it's because I wanted to make sure you knew how to do the actual measuring. I shouldn't have, certainly shouldn't have done the calculation. <laughs> I can't undo it. I can delete this what this live. <laughs> so there you go. Forget that. Just do it now. Do it for yourself. I've given you the answer. I can't believe I did that. I don't do that. I don't give the answer. I seriously just got so engrossed and I was enjoying it so much <laughs> that I gave you the answer. Oh, well. That won't happen on the YouTube video. <laughs> so, right, well this, I'm not gonna give you any answers for this one. We're now going to do, you're going to do, not me. We're going to do 
um, this is now for upper primary, upper secondary. So if you're um, 14 to 16, um, around, around that age, middle, middle secondary, um, if you, we're gonna make scale drawings of one, two, three sports. Um, we've got a, a soccer pitch, we've got a tennis court and a cricket field. And we want scale drawings of those. You've got all the information you need on these and the links to these are in the, in the, in the, the announcements and I will put them down under here as well. And for the YouTube, of course, they'll be, um, they'll be available. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to help you with the circle. If you don't have a compass at home, that's to make the, that looks, this outer one could be an oval, it can be a circle, it doesn't matter, but this inner one, this infield has to be a circle. And then everything has to be to scale. And if you don't have a circle at home, you can use another use for toilet paper, another use for toilet paper rolls, but that's quite small. And plus, if you look at this end, it's not exactly a circle. So what you can do is you can use a, I had it all ready here, but of course I moved everything around and I've got one pencil, there's the other pencil and I've got a paper clip. So what you do with the paper clip is you just take one end, open it out like so, nice and straight. You put the pencil, where am I going here so you can see it? I need to come over here, so I'll move the camera, that's it. Move the camera. It's kind of, I'm looking, it's everything's reversed, so it can be a bit awkward to do. And then put one pencil there. I think I want to turn that around. Put one pencil there so that it's touching, so that there's no ambiguity there. Another pencil here, and then hold one pencil super firmly. There you go. Great circle. And that's just using a paper clip and then you can do the oval or another circle on the outside and then do your drawing to scale. So that's scale drawings of the three types of pitches. And then if you're in upper, upper secondary, so if you are ages um, 16 to 18, then what we want you to, well, you can, um, if you're upper secondary, you can solve the table mountain problem with tr trigonometry anyway on that one and it and then with the upper secondary if you can solve the problem without the diagram the idea is to just just take the challenge and solve it without the diagram and make your own diagram so you have to draw the diagram based on the question so um those are activities for today so make the meter length Meter sticks, we use two in the end to measure the room, measure whatever you want, draw pictures of it. Low, um, upper primary, draw, draw pictures, uh, uh, draw pictures, but with some scale. I, I, was, I did some quite detailed scale there. Make it more or less right. And if you're lower secondary, you want to start getting the detail quite well. And, and even, even 16 to 18 year olds, I've got quite a lot of experience drawing, although I haven't done any much. I'm, this is all brushing up my skills. This um, quarantine time is brushing up my skills. So I'm doing all of these videos and I haven't done stuff like this for a long, long time. So um, I'm gonna have to brush up on how to, to draw that um, right angle to get that. That was interesting. Oh, I know, I know how to do it now. No, I don't. No, I actually don't know how to do it. So I'm going to find out exactly how to draw that accurately without a computer. I've been using computers for so long. Okay, so that was today. Measuring and drawing for early years and upper primary, drawing, drawing scale pictures for upper primary, doing much more detail scale for lower secondary, and then doing the working out how high um, table Mountain is using a scale drawing and and also then doing the scale drawings of the 
the cricket field, the tennis court and the football or the soccer um, pitch and then doing the trigonometry. Well, in secondary, just do the trigonometry as well. As soon as you're ready to do the trigonometry, if you're curious about it, you've heard about it, go ahead and I'm not gonna introduce that here, but you can Google it. You can find out or speak to an, an older, if you've got an older learner in your house or make it a family project if you feel you're ready. If you're in, if you're around 13, 14, you can definitely do the trigonometry or younger depending where you feel you are right that's it that has been long enough that i'll do at and in 22 minutes i'll be doing the session for early years um so we'll be doing this but doing the doing the measuring in such a way that literally four i'll be presenting to the early years so if you've got any early years learners in your home please come back to making maths fun for kids of all ages at in 20 minutes and we'll be doing a session just for them right thank you very much for joining now to please do if you find um this is useful to you please do tell you tell other people let them know on on facebook share the group let me put this further back so you can see it There we go, nearly. Right, so we've got, these videos will be done much better on, on the YouTube channel, Mass Toys. We're gonna, we're gonna film them all separately and carefully and I'll have all my details right. Because I, sometimes I realize I don't actually know how to do what I thought I did know how to do. And then I'll go and show you how to do it. Honestly, well, you can do it anyway. And, um, but you can see that how, if I'd let you do it, it would have probably been more fun for you. I know I had fun doing it. So the, but having, having me shown you how to do it, please, when you, if you help other people do it, don't tell them the answer. Um, if, there are lots of, lots of ideas for fun activities on the AIMSEC Facebook page. And then please share this group, go, go to your Facebook, um, profile and share the group as well and then on the aiming high the the this is where you'll actually find all the activities that we do on these lives and they are there's there's teacher resources specifically aimed at teachers but now we've got family learning activities which include the activities to do all the way from early years all the way from early years it's disappeared again It's gonna get away again. The early way from early years to basically from ages four to 18. And you're looking at that. And now I'm gonna to say to you, let's see who has been here. Um, Helen, hello, Rod, hello, Eddie, hello. Um, Russell and Barbara, hello. And then we've got Anybody else join us? Just want to say hello to people if they've been on the call. And I don't see anybody else. If you are there and I'm not saying hello, I apologize. Facebook isn't telling me you're there, but thank you very much for joining us. And I'm going to now find the Zoom call and okay. I'm ready to stop. Thank you very much. See you in 15 minutes, 18 minutes on the live call for the early years learners.